everyone, welcome back to Rita Roo Kids. My name is Miss Christy, and today I'm so excited to read another awesome book with you. If you're as excited as I am, be sure to give this video a thumbs up below and don't forget to click subscribe. That way, every time we post a new story, you and I can read together again right away. All right, today's book is called Animals in Winter by Henrietta Bancroft and Richard G. Van Gelder, illustrated by Helen K. Davey. Let's find out about all these animals in winter. Animals in Winter by Henrietta Bancroft and Richard G. Van Gelder, illustrated by Helen K. Davey. The days grow short, the nights grow long, it is getting colder, winter is coming. Leaves have fallen from the trees, there are no berries on the bushes, insects are gone, the grass is dead and brown. Birds and other animals are getting ready for winter. Some of the birds will fly south. Bluebirds and Oreos go toward the south. They go where it is warm and sunny and where there is food for them to eat. When spring comes, the birds will make the long journey back north. They migrate. Some butterflies migrate too. That is what the monarch butterflies do. They gather in a tree by the hundreds before cold weather comes. They stay in the tree all night. In the morning, they fly toward their winter homes in the south. Many bats fly south too, but some bats stay in the north all winter. When the weather gets cold, they go to a cave. There is no wind or snow in the cave. The bats sleep there all winter. They do not eat, they live on fat stored inside them. They do not move, they hardly breathe. They sleep, sleep, sleep. They hibernate. Woodchucks hibernate too. When fall comes, a woodchuck eats and eats and eats. He eats grass, twigs, and leaves. He grows fat. When it gets cold, the woodchuck crawls into his long tunnel and goes to sleep. So here it says it's the secret entrance. And this is the sleeping chamber. And down here we have the toilet chamber. So where it goes to the bathroom. And the tunnel drops and narrows to keep out enemies. And this is the main entrance here. And this is a mound. It's called a sun porch and watchtower. Does he sleep for a day? Longer than that. Does he sleep for a week? Longer than that. A month? Even longer. A woodchuck can sleep as long as four months. December, January, February, March. And here it's showing the weather in each month. So in December, it's starting to snow. In January, it's very snowy. In February, it's snowy and windy. And in March, the snow is starting to go away and it's raining. There's even a rainbow. The woodchuck seems hardly alive. He breathes very slowly. His heart beats slowly. He sleeps, sleeps, sleeps. He hibernates. Some animals do not have to hibernate. They gather food and save it for the winter. That is what a pika does. A pika looks a little like a rabbit, but with round ears. There's the round ears. Pikas live in high mountains where winters are long and cold. They eat grass. In summer, they cut more grass than they can eat. They spread the grass on flat stones. The hot sun dries it. By the end of summer, a pika may have gathered 50 pounds of grass. He hides it under rocks. In winter, he eats the dry grass. It keeps her alive. How smart. Squirrels gather food too and save it for winter. They dig holes in the ground. They bury hickory nuts and acorns. Then when winter comes, they dig them up and eat them. 
Sometimes squirrels forget where they buried the nuts. Trees may grow from the nuts that squirrels forget. Some animals do not get ready for winter at all. They do not store food, they do not hibernate, they do not migrate. They must hunt for food all winter long. There are mice that must hunt all winter for seeds of goldenrod, asters, and other wild plants. Sometimes they eat farmer's corn, oats, and wheat. I bet if they found a farmhouse, they'd be very happy because there's tons of food in there. Deer must dig in the snow for dried leaves, plants, and moss. When the snow is deep, they must eat the twigs, buds, and bark of trees. The rabbit must hunt under the snow for bits of grass and plants. When the snow is deep, he too eats the buds and bark of bushes so he can stay alive. See, it's sticking out of the snow. He only had to bury down a little bit in order to get the parts of the twig. In the winter, the fox hunts for mice and rabbits. This fox has discovered a mouse in its tunnel beneath the snow. Look, underneath the snow, and the fox is gonna try to get it. When the winter is cold and the snow is deep, many animals cannot find food. Here are some ways you can help animals in the winter. This says, make a peanut and popcorn garland. Nail a sunflower head to a post or fence. Hang suet in a plastic net bag. Nail a seed tray with drainage holes to a fence post. Make an apple, cranberry, raisin, and orange garland. Stick fruit and cheese pieces on a dead branch. Here you can plant shrubs with berries for food and shelter. Make sure feeders are placed out of reach of predators. See how it's hanging high in the tree? Put a birdhouse in a tree or under the eaves of your house. Oh, for a nice warm place for the birds. Hang an ear of corn for squirrels and chipmunks. Please remember, once you begin feeding birds and other wild animals in winter, you must continue. They are depending on the food you supply. So once they find you, they're depending on you. So if you're going to start one of these things, you have to do it all winter long so that they can always come and eat by your house. A perk of that is that you'll get to see the animals come and eat, right? Eventually, the days grow longer, the nights grow shorter, it begins to get warmer, spring is coming. I loved reading with you today, and I hope that we can read together again soon. If you liked this book, don't forget to give it a thumbs up below and click subscribe. That way, every time we post a new story, you and I can read together again right away. If you'd like some activities to go along with our books, you can head over to readaroukids.com. There we do all kinds of fun things like arts and crafts and science experiments. Sometimes we work on our math skills and reading skills, and we even cook recipes together. If you'd like to find out what we're up to every day, you can always follow us on our social media. Again, I loved reading with you today, and I hope that we can read together again soon. Until then, Rita Roo loves you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.